Hi. You ready for another cool book? Oh, you remember? Oh, did you miss last week? Remember last week we read Drum Dream Girl, which was about a girl called Mio who wanted to play the drums so badly. And if you missed it, remember you can go back to the church's YouTube page and, and find links to all of the children's sermons. And there's quite a few of them. So if you get bored, there's lots to listen to, right? Well, today we have another cool story. It is about, it's called Ada's Violin. And it's about a girl with a dream, a man with a vision, a city that's built near a landfill, and a community that needs some hope. And this is a true story. So let's read. Ada's Violin, the true story of the recycled orchestra of Paraguay. Written by Susan Hood, illustrated by Sally Wern Comport. A de Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down the road to Cataura. Beep, beep, beep. Backing into the landfill, they tipped their loads up and up and crash. The trash came tumbling down. 1,500 tons every day. Ada and her friends watched as the Gonjaros recyclers scrambled, tearing into plastic bags with long-handled hooks, pushing aside moldy produce, and grabbing anything they could recycle to sell. The going rates? Five cents for a pound of cardboard. Ten cents for a pound of plastic. This noisy, stinking, sweltering slum was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Ada watched, eyes wide, but she didn't say much. And yet, she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances, toys, perfumes, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box full of gold jewelry. Little did Ada know there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfill. Every day when Ada's parents went to work, Grandmother Miriam cared for Ada and her little sister, Noelia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs from the 1960s. The girls grew up to the tunes of the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yes! Sorry, I like that kind of music too. Ada loved to sing too, but only when no one was listening. Ada's dad brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Ada heard one above all others. Zing! went the strings of the violin. When the girls started school, Grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes let out at noon. Young Ada was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the girls stayed close to home playing with Grandma Marion's doggies and making sand cakes in the dirt. Soon they joined their cousins, playing hide and seek or a game of handball in the streets. In time, they ventured farther afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Ada noticed the teenagers hanging out in the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill looming ahead. What would happen to them? 
to her, to her little sister. She watched as the older kids turned to gangs and got into fights. One day, when Ada was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of a chapel. Violin, guitar, cello, taught Saturdays at 8 a.m. Fabio Chavez. How Grandma had longed to learn music. Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without even asking them or their parents. Ada's heart sang out. Thanks to her abuela, she could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher, Fabio Chavez, had three guitars and two violins to share. Ada chose a violin right away. But 10 children had signed up. Frustrated, Ada and her friends found there were not enough instruments to go around. And there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly realized that the children would need to practice at home. But it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive instrument in Catera, where a violin is worth much more than a house. Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal, Signor Chavez thought he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luthiers that made its own instruments. That was it. He asked Nicolas Cola Gomez, a gonchero and carpenter, for help. Signor Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and discovered an old x-ray film. Would that work? It did. Senor Gomez kept experimenting and others like Tito Romero helped. Inventing instruments wasn't easy. But they fiddled around, discovering which materials hit just the right notes. They transformed oil drums into cellos, water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. Soon there were enough instruments for all the children who wanted to learn to play. Ada chose a violin made from an old paint can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crates. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Well, Senior Chavez set up a strict schedule of three-hour lessons. The class had no classroom, so they played outside, despite the 100-degree heat and sudden downpours. At first, Ada and the others struggled. Sharps and flats clanged and clash. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was way too much work and gave up, but not Ada. After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. In time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets hit all the right notes. Their class became a small island where Senor Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind, always say please and thank you, say you're sorry, be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Chavez told the children. Soon the ragtag crew of kids learn to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Cataera. Goncheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads 
to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strains of Bibi's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to a place far away. She could be who she was meant to be. As Ada's skill grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Ada was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Catera and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple, and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them, just as they dazzled the world. When Ada was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world-famous rock band. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in Bogota, Colombia. Ada was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stage with glaring lights and heard people screaming. She didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. And as their performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. Catiera, Catiera, Catiera. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They had discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill. Buried in the trash was music, and buried in themselves was something to be proud of. Whoa, well, pretty cool, right? Can you believe it? In this story used their talents to help other people because remember that's one of the things that 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 Jesus would like us to do right to be kind to each other to help each other to love each other well it wasn't just senior Gomez was it remember some of the dads and people in the town helped build those instruments what about that rock band Metallica who invited them to go on tour with them? That's pretty amazing, right? What about the people at that concert when they played and they cheered and the kids were astonished? If you'd like to know more, have your parents take you to this website, RecycledOrchestraCartera.com. And I'll see you next week, okay? I think the story I'm going to read next week is not a true story, but it's still very interesting. It's about a boy who stutters. Do you know somebody who stutters? It's an interesting book. I'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.